What are the scientifically proven strategies that we can start using today to strengthen the mind? By the end of this video, you will take away three evidence-based strategies that you can use to strengthen the mind by nurturing your mental well-being and happiness. In this video, we're going to focus on how we can actively cultivate positive emotions to increase our happiness. What can we do actively with our mind to nurture our mental well-being? Research shows that meditating or praying to cultivate positive emotions like happiness, gratitude, love, and hope can increase our social connections with the people we interact with and ultimately improve our physical well-being. In an experiment, people were divided into two groups. Group one was invited to a workshop that taught them how to meditate or pray that they may be happy, loving, and grateful, and to also meditate and pray for others, the people that they liked and disliked, to be grateful, happy, and loving. And they were asked to do that every day. While group two was put into a waiting list to go on to this uh, prayer or meditation workshop. So group two didn't actually participate in this workshop at all. And both groups were asked every day in terms of how much time that they spend meditating or praying each day and also measure their uh, different types of emotions every day. And before and after the experiment, they were also, both groups were tested in terms of their vagal tone, which means how stable or variable their heart rate is while they are at rest. So when, a, when they are at still or rest, the measure of how fast or stable their heart rate is, and that's a measure of their physical health, physical well-being before and after the experiment to see if uh, participating in this workshop, uh, to see how much time that they spend doing meditation or praying uh, improves their social interactions with people around them, but also uh, their physical well-being before and after the experiment. The results show that group one that participated in this workshop for prayer and meditation actually experienced greater social connections with the people they interacted with and also an improvement in the vagal tone after the experiment compared to group two. And so cultivating the positive emotions in us through meditation or prayer uh, can help us channel those positive emotions in our uh, social interactions, therefore nurturing the social connections with them uh, more effectively and also improve our physical well-being as a result. For me, the most effective strategy for nurturing positive emotions and to really increase my happiness is to really pray to express my gratitude for the greatest love that I ever received. Whatever the circumstance is, remembering to be grateful for the love that I freely received is the secret of being content in any and every situation. Of course, I don't remember to pray to express my gratitude every moment of my life, but when I do, when I do pray to express my gratitude for the love that I received, no matter what the circumstance is, I can overcome any stressful event, any pain or suffering. One question is, since meditation or prayer can be a quite a burdensome task, like finding a really quiet place to go and to sit down, to close your eyes, to really pray and meditate, can be quite uh, time consuming, I wonder whether the method of prayer and meditation uh, that you engage throughout the day, but momentarily, but very frequently throughout the day, can be just as effective or even more effective in nurturing the positive emotions and social connections with people we interact with, but also in improving our physical well-being. So remember to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances to experience your body and mind become stronger. Research shows that in fact, expressing gratitude or saying thank you to other people can increase our emotional well-being and happiness. But the research also shows that people do not uh, express gratitude as often as they should because they underestimate how much saying thank you to others can make them feel positive but also overestimate how much awkward 
the recipient of gratitude might feel. In a study, people were asked to write a letter to express gratitude to someone that they thought had really touched their life in a meaningful way. And before and after the exercise writing the letter, the emotions were measured to see how the exercise of writing the letter affects their emotions before and after writing the letter. The research also asked people to predict how much positive emotions or negative emotions the recipient of the letter would feel as a result of receiving the letter. And so if I'm writing a letter to someone that I believe really touched my life and I'm just predicting whether um, the person that I'm sending the letter to would feel positive or how, how much awkward that they feel as a result of getting this letter. And finally, the research also asked the recipient of the letter in terms of what kind of emotions that they're feeling, their positive and negative emotions. The results show that expressing gratitude or saying thank you to other people significantly improves their emotional well-being and happiness. But the results also found that uh, people overestimate how much awkward the person receiving the letter or gratitude will feel and also underestimate how much positive emotions the recipient would feel. And in other words, we underestimate or undervalue the power of gratitude and worry more than we should about how much awkward the recipient might feel as a result of receiving our gratitude. So we often do not realize the power of saying thank you for improving the emotional well-being of others and also for ourselves. So it's really crazy to think how much power our words have, our mouth has on improving the well-being of ourselves and of others. Right? Saying thank you can really make the other people feel positive and also you know, cultivate the positive emotions and happiness and emotional well-being in my own life. And I certainly feel very grateful to my parents for their sacrifices that they've made as a result of coming to Australia for my education when I was in my primary school. And so expressing more gratitude to them, to saying thank you to my parents more often could in fact make them feel happier, nurture their emotional well-being, but also at the same time improve my own happiness and well-being. One question is whether different types of reasons why we feel grateful to another person can play a significant role in helping us overcome the barriers to expressing gratitude. For example, we might feel grateful to another person because he or she might have given us uh, some really good uh, material gifts before, like you know, getting a really good gift from them. Or we might feel grateful because of their time or help that, that, that they have given us. Or sometimes we might feel grateful for the love and caring that we received, their sacrifices, or even the forgiveness that they've given us for any kind of faults and wrongdoings that we might have committed to them. And so the hypothesis is that we might feel you know, more willing to express our gratitude when the, the reason for gratitude is based on love, caring, or the sacrifice, or even forgiveness that, that we might have received from them. Um, more than when we feel grateful for them because of some material gifts that we received in the past or even money. So remember that we have the power to improve our well-being and the well-being of others simply by remembering to feel grateful and thankful and not being afraid to express gratitude to them. Who is the person you are most grateful to and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below and also share this video to them to express gratitude to them. Most of us could agree that music can increase our happiness, especially listening to the songs that we listened to when we were growing up. And research shows that even the songs that were released before we were born, but were the songs that were enjoyed by our parents while they were raising us uh, during our childhood, can uh, often remind us of our you know, personal childhood memories and make us very happy and nostalgic. Research shows that the songs that we listen to in our early 20s stay our favorite you know, songs for the rest of our lives. 
And so the songs that were really enjoyed by our parents when they were in their 20s would have been their favorite songs, uh, especially when they were raising us up during our childhood. And so, for example, if you were born in 1992, your parents would have been on average in their early 20s uh, during 1980s. And so uh, if you were born in 1992, the songs that were released in early 1980s uh, would have been the songs that were really favored by your parents that they listened to while they were raising you. And so listening to the songs that were released in 1980s would make you feel more happiness and nostalgic by uh, bringing up your personal childhood memories. So if you were born in 1992, the songs that might make you really happy and nostalgic are these. Uh, Call Me by uh, Blondie. Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. Um, Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. And Every Breath You Take by The Police. Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. When Doves Cry by Prince, What's Love Got To Do With It by Tina Turner. So these are the songs that were released between 1980 and 1984 that your parents in their early 20s might have listened to uh, more regularly, that they uh, play those songs when they were raising you up, that you grew up listening to those songs. And so listening to the songs that were released even before you were born, but really favored by your parents in their early 20s can in fact make you greater happiness and, and nostalgia. So it's really interesting how our musical preferences are established in our early 20s and uh, those musical preferences are passed down the generations and that uh, listening to the songs that are really favored by our parents in their early 20s can make us really happy and nostalgic. So it makes me really conscious what kind of songs that I listen to now when I'm raising my baby because when she grows up, she will listen to those songs and get a really good dose of happiness and nostalgia. So music definitely gives color to life, making it more precious and wonderful. In the comments below, write what kind of songs were released when your parents were in their 20s that you remember listening to them when you were growing up and listen to the songs and give yourself a boost in happiness and nostalgia. So the three key takeaways from this video are first, spend more time meditating and praying to cultivate happiness, gratitude and love in your heart. And that will improve the social connections that you have with other people, but also improve your physical well-being. Second, uh, say thank you to people who really had a positive impact on your life more often by realizing that we may not express gratitude uh, much more frequently because we underestimate the, the power of gratitude in, in terms of generating positive emotions to the people we express gratitude to but also uh, we overestimate how much awkward the recipient of gratitude might feel as we express our gratitude. So spend more time expressing gratitude to the people around you to nurture your emotional well-being and the emotional well-being of other people. And do not be afraid to express gratitude. Third, spend more time listening to the songs that you listened to while you are growing up, the songs that might have been released before you were even born that were favored by your parents when they were in their 20s to give yourself a really a great great boost in happiness and nostalgia. I'm glad that you're here because you can now use scientific knowledge to strengthen your mind and to nurture your mental well-being. Subscribe to get more scientifically proven strategies to strengthen your mind.